Croix to a channel of light fluid. And we're back at Hammond Manor. Yes, I know I said we we're going to be doing something else this weekend, but uh, life got in the way, so that is being put off till next weekend, but it means we get Return to Passwood a few days earlier than I'd really planned. So it all works out in the end. And uh, don't forget, Thai fans, I still have to do that uh, little section uh, for him. We're going to skip through some of the scenes that repeat on the uh, day 20. And then we'll do the actual Tyson scenes in its own video, which I will uh, sort out for, uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so. I have a week off coming up, so I'll try and find some time then to do that one. So we'll be up to date with Dean and Tyson for the moment. But saying that, let's get going and start up day 21. There had only been a few times where I felt like I'd been falling in my dreams. I was conscious of it happening, but instead of waking up, I just seemed to slow down till I was on my feet. This time, anyway. It was similar to sinking, maybe, but I still found myself in an endless darkness rather than any other place I could recognise. A dull throb in the back of my head made me wonder what was happening, but I didn't have to wait long. Dave? There was that all-too-familiar voice. I knew I must have been dreaming. Still, the thought for once brought a smile to my face, knowing the danger had just passed and I had a chance to breathe. Oh, five more minutes, dream, Dad. There was that chuckle, and I could picture him shaking his head. <laughs> dream, Dad. <laughs> well, I'm flattered. We can't spend all day in bed. Let's sleep. I felt the covers being thrown back. Instinctively, I curled up tight over the sun onset of feeling less toasty. Opening my eyes slowly, I looked around my room. Sure enough, there Dad was. Come on, time to get up. As I went to sit up, I was hit with a headache and nausea. What's wrong, sport? Feeling under the weather? No, I... Uh, maybe I did go a little crazy last night. There was a moment I wasn't sure what I'd just said. Maybe I just said something back to try and get a rise out of Dad, even if he was just a dream. I need to sleep in a little longer than Tyson. She's my favourite son. But you need some grub in you. Dad, I'm your only son. I could tell something was wrong as I'd started speaking for I consciously thought back my response. I tried to follow it up with something, but instead felt myself stretch out my fingers and sit up to watch Dad linger by the bedroom door. You think things are going to be all right? How to say, champ? Just don't go thinking too hard about it, all right? Apparently, it was time to get up and get dressed. I felt like a passenger in my own body as I moved about the room, trying to figure out why this lucid dream seemed to be playing out on its own. Even trying to speak to myself or think out aloud wasn't working. I could see just fine, but what we, I, was looking at was restricted to this dream Dave I found myself in. I could smell breakfast when I hit the bottom of the stairs. My eyes lingered briefly on the sofa where a couple of pillows and a blanket still were messily laid out on it. Tyson, did you sleep on the sofa? Yeah, why? Why? Why what? Why did you sleep on the sofa? I'd wandered into the kitchen to see Ty sitting at the table in the middle of eating breakfast. Dad was sitting down himself as I wandered over the coffee pot. Where else will I sleep? My bed. I don't go past now from drinking too much. Maybe that'll be an option. I groaned, rubbing my head. Is this what a hangover was like? I wondered why my mouth was dry, but still. Dad and Ty seemed to be laughing things off. I could see the telltale cracks in their expressions that hinted they were worried. Was it that bad? You don't remember how we had to rush you to hospital? They don't want to risk endings. We took you to get your stomach pumped, Dave. It's really that bad? Did Mom say anything? They looked at one another before looking back to me. Your mom said he's overreacting. But I passed out? Well, we want you to be taking some aspirin or something. You know the whole mixing alcohol with medicine thing. Well, you shouldn't do it. Obviously, Tyson. But I'm fine. I'll be honest, I don't remember much of last night. I do feel kind of gross. 
I'll get some food in you. Get some water. If you're still feeling out of the weather later, we can look into something else to pick you up. You just remember why you're drinking, right? No. Tyson motioned to me and I looked back at him funny. He rolled his eyes and pointed to my hand, to which a ring sat comfortably on a finger on my right hand. Oh, right, of course. Remember now, sport? Yeah, I'm getting married. Well, actually, it was just a fucking engagement party. I you at the table, Tyson. Oh, shit, sorry. Dad shook his head, flashing me a smile. If anything, we should be sorry today for letting him get carried away. Last time we wanted to avenge your fiancé knocking on our door. Speaking of, I've probably seen him later, so uh, uh, what do I tell him? The truth? Uh, he's going to be distracted all afternoon if I do, though. Once Dave tells him now, there's no way around it. Which would you rather? Can we back up a minute? I mean, I get the celebrating, but shouldn't Sal have been here if we were celebrating that? He trusted you to us, or mostly Tyson anyway. Had to go help out his best friend with something. Yeah, he got himself stuck again. Plus, apparently you'd already celebrated a few nights back. No, the other fucking man should keep that a secret from the rest of us for a couple of days. Tyson. Oh, sorry. Tyson stood up, pushing his chair and cleared his throat. You really went fucking overboard, didn't you? I guess you're on the table now. Ty ruffled the fur atop my head and I grumbled, still feeling sick. If I wasn't feeling sick, I probably should have been. I just knew that I was. Hey, Dad. Yes, Dave? Then they were gone and I was falling again. I must have been sleeping. Dad was gone, but more importantly, I was still at the mansion, wasn't I? As I opened my eyes, my head hurt something fierce. Like last time, I didn't seem to be in control of my own body. Now, what happened? I'll take credit for that. You made me pass out again. Why? I sounded angry, though from what I could see around me in the brief time of the day I was living in, nothing seemed wrong. Fun. What kind of person even does that? Well, I'm hardly a person, am I? Ugh. On a more serious note, two questions for you. What now? First, have you decided what you're going to do about Jack? Not really. There aren't many options for us, is there? True, but it's worth asking. What about the second thing? It's about what you saw in the little dream I gave you. You mean memory? Or semantics? There isn't much to say, just more of the same sort of stuff, really. Thanatos didn't seem all that thrilled about it and shook his head. Details, Dave. Okay, well, it's all right. It's basically what happened yesterday, except... Except? There's no reply. As much as I wanted to step in and ask questions myself, I wasn't the one in control. Is that why you asked Oswin that favour? Stop Benson from firing his gun? Maybe, but that's interesting. Interesting how? Well, the variations between where we are now and what you saw. For example. I watched as Thanatos looked me directly in the eye. Something in how he did it made my skin crawl, as if he could sense that I was there watching through this other Dave's eyes. Imagine this was a dream. Imagine you're watching these events as a memory instead. That's... okay. So what? Imagine what you could do with that information if you go back, look back on the previous loop and change how things go. Nothing that bad happened, though. And if it did, if you'd seen the trap I set for Tyson for, you needed to use the vault? As in, use the vault without a password? When am I speaking? Sure, I had to knock you out this time, but... He shrugged again. How about a test? What sort of test? I ask you a question, you give me the answer. And if I get it right? Then we'll know you have been through all this before and I'll treat you to something nice. If he winked, I would have known he was talking to me. If he'd given any indication, he knew I was there. I missed it, though. Maybe this was just how he was. I felt the me I was piloting nod slowly. 
Okay, what's the question? The question is this. Why is the Leo medal? The what? We hadn't found the Leo medal yet. Seeing as though the other day I had no clue where it was either. No, don't know. But we haven't found that one yet. How else would I know? Because I'm about to tell you in order to give you a freebie. I don't know if I trust a freebie from you. Take it or leave it. If you get it right, then you'll get your treat. If not, at least you'll know where the medal is. All right, where is it? Listen close, Dave. Leo is hidden. In a place Oswin does his best work. His voice was fading fast. He'd given the answer for what memory this was had finished fading. But what was I meant to do with this information? There's a medal where Oswin does his best work? Well then, there are only a few places that could be. I slowly opened my eyes, my head throbbing gently with a vague feeling of pain. Or maybe not pain, but as if the inside of my skull had been itchy and I'd just given it a good scratch. For the most part, my throat felt dry and I needed water. Then coffee. Then breakfast. Just thinking about food made my stomach growl. Something I wasn't expecting, but it was nice having an appetite again. The heavy arm around me half pinned me in place to Dean's front. I struggled with the prospect of either getting up to get coffee or staying comfortable with my boyfriend. Another growl from my stomach made my mind up, and I gingerly moved Dean's arm so I could slip free. The moment I wasn't against him, though, he reached out to grab something to replace me, and I slipped my pillow into his arms. There was a moment where I thought that he might wake up. The dopey smile on his face as he cuddled into the pillow told me he was still thoroughly asleep. Leaning over, I kissed him lightly on the cheek before I got out of bed proper. Once I was dressed, I headed downstairs. The house was quiet, although that was likely due to me being one of the first people up, if not the first. When I got to the kitchen, it was cold and untouched, which just meant I had the pleasure of turning on the coffee machine and getting breakfast started. Looking in the pantry and the fridge, though, I started to wonder just how long what food we had was going to last. Those of in the mansion, three meals a day at best, for another week at least. I frowned, thinking about how we'd start to ration things. The freezer still had a good stockpile, but was going to miss having milk and my coffee if they didn't have powdered stuff. Even that wasn't the same. Pacing the kitchen, my mind went back to my dream, trying to piece it together. Where he does his best work. Part of me was expecting Thanatos to show up and I scanned the kitchen for him, but nothing. Breakfast is ready. I burst into the dining room just so everyone seemed to have settled into their seats. That said, what I'd made for breakfast paled in comparison to the last big breakfast I'd made. What's for breakfast? Uh, looks like toast. Did you struggle? If you need to help, you'd have just said so. I'd have been happy to help. No, I'm just being... Uh, Mindful about how much food we have left? The comment made everyone look at the toast and then back to me quickly. A little nervous about how people were going to react, but no one said anything about it. Well, uh, what's everyone's plans for today? Uh, no plans on my end. All things considered, no plans are good plans, right? What makes you say that? Well, after yesterday, I imagine people won't necessarily want to do anything, right? Well, we can't just do nothing. Uh, any ideas, then? If we're in law of food, I can't really readily make something in the kitchen as a group. It's something I should probably check, too, and then we have a plan to properly ration things out if needed. Well, I don't think it's that dire just yet, but it's worth checking. Well, four origins are likely out, too, given how dangerous the woods are now. Speaking of the danger, do we know what we're going to be doing about that? Thanatos said we have a couple of days of breathing room. I nodded slowly, thinking back to the past few days. A break was nice, and even if he was lying, there was a chance that what he said was the truth. He did? That's a relief. Although I don't think it's wise to go letting our guard completely down, or just in case. I agree, but what do we do? Well, should I keep him watching and arming ourselves just in case? There isn't much alternative, is there? It's not as if we can go get guns, either. Why not? 
Benson has them locked away in his room behind another locked door, but apparently the keys are safe. What do you say where the keys were, just in case? Just that they were safe. Well, that's not an answer. You think he's lost them? Or maybe he doesn't want anyone to know where they are, just in case they want to do something bad with them. That's a little dangerous, isn't it, in case we need them? It would be more dangerous to arm someone who doesn't know how to use a gun properly. And across to Orlando with a frown. For a moment, Benson's face flashed in my mind after the investigation yesterday, but something about that event made me worry about Orlando. I just couldn't place why. Well, yes, that's true. What weapons does that leave us? Should we need them, though? Well, I might see if we can get that sword from the pseudo armor upstairs. It's already bolted in place, so a wrench of some sort should get it free. A sword? Really? Or well, better than nothing? I agree. Otherwise, you only have things from the kitchen. Well, we also have the axe in the greenhouse. Although, I figure I'll take that up should we need to. Where'd you get the axe? We'll have the sword then. Well, given the size, imagine Sal is the one who could handle it. That or a shovel, maybe. What's anyone going to do with the shovel? Dig something up, maybe? Or bury something? Or a uh, makeshift crowbar? Glancing at Tyson showed he had some level of pride and threw me a subtle thumbs up. I wasn't sure if I should be happy about that or not. The conversation moved on regardless. So I don't think that's going to come up, Dave. So we've got checking the kitchen for our food supply and gathering weapons should we need them. That's what we're doing today. Well, plus whatever Benson and Oswin have in mind. You think so? It's their house after all. Maybe they have a hidden store of food or some other idea of what we could be doing. Well, I agree. Plus we need to keep tabs on Thanatos as well. Just in case we can get any more insight on what's to come. Good luck getting him to help us. Oh, I have no intention of going to find him. That job is absolutely yours. Why me? He seems to like you enough. Or, well, you've had more experience with him anyway. That's probably fine. I worked out well enough given the dream I had last night. If anyone could answer my questions, it'd be him. All right, should we split up into groups then? How about Sal, myself, and Tyson handle getting ourselves sorted as far as weapons other supplies, while the others handle the food? Wasn't Dean going to get the sword? Anyone can use a wrench when to a bolt. Plus, if foraging absolutely needs to be considered, it's better if the person that knows how to do that be present, right? I guess that's fair. Why are you forgetting about Dave in there, Hoss? I didn't forget. I figure he'll do as he normally does and float between the groups. Dave, are you fine with that? I guess so. I can always keep an eye out for Thanatos in the meantime, too. Oh, perfect. Dean, Orlando, to the kitchen. Roswell gathered up a few of the dishes and breakfast and wandered into the kitchen. The other two followed suit and flashed me a smile on their way out. Oh, come on, big dog. We have supplies to get. Then the others left in the same way, leaving me behind in the dining room. Normally I'd have felt strange being left out like this. My mind was attached to seeking answers from a certain rat. Thanatos, are you around? Calling out for him seemed like the safest place to start. His habit of just being around made it seem like I could just call and he'd be there. Though that was hardly working. Are you down here? Hadn't occurred to me just how difficult he might be to find. Given he could just as easily avoid being found, that left me in a lurch. I found myself standing in front of the vault door. This is all that rat was. A computer attached to a room holding a secret. With a frown, I inspected the input panel. There was a word that existed that opened the door. But part of me deep down said that I'd never know what that word would be. Something about the panel drew my attention. And I leaned in a bit closer. First I thought I'd seen something. But it was something I'd heard instead. Almost like the churning of heavy metal combined with the sound of a clock ticking. I didn't think bomb and more felt that it was closer to breathing, that this sound was the mechanical version of whatever was beating in my chest. Anatos, can you hear me? There was nothing that came as a reply, but I continued speaking anyway. 
If you could see everything that happened in front of this door, there was no doubt in my mind that if not now, but sometime he'd come and pay a visit. I had a dream last night, but it wasn't... What I mean to say is... Uh, you didn't make me remember anything, right? That wasn't you? Again, the silence stretched out, making me fidget. How traumatic can an event be for me to remember it? How can I tell the difference between what's a dream and what's a memory? A dry laugh found its way out of my mouth and I shook my head. Are there even any more passwords for me to find? For me to remember? That depends. I immediately turned on my heel and looked back towards the door. Standing just out of view was Thanatos, his beady red eyes glowing softly in the dark. Depends on what? You, mostly. I'd rather be no more passwords if I had my say. Why? Because that means that nothing bad happened I didn't have to step in and prevent it. Or the opposite. Though this is just the first time around this set of variables, it's your job to survive long enough to be a password to be made. Only you'd know that, right? Yes and no. There's always a third option. Be in. Whatever you experienced last night, I didn't cause. Maybe I'm rubbing off on you. Don't go telling Roswell. You might get jealous I'm developing psychic powers. He seemed to regard the statement carefully for a few moments, measuring his words. Yeah, I bet he would get jealous. Is there a way to tell the difference between what's a dream and what's a memory? And not really. Not at all. Well, with how consistent you are, not that I know of it, anyway. What makes you think what you saw was a memory? It was strange. It was like I was there, but I, I wasn't. Like, I was looking through the eyes of the me that, um... Yeah, real easy to follow. Sorry, it was almost like an out-of-body experience, but... In-body experience instead? Listen, I think there was what it was you saw. Could be a dream, could be a memory. Where it was, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. I frowned, thinking back to the dream. We were outside, and uh, you would just give me a vision, I think. That ain't narrowing it down. And there was talk about Jack, a plan or something. I think you're better off asking yourself if that was sufficiently traumatic to even be a thing to recall. I... You have a point. Think about it this way. You can't remember anything unless you've been traumatised by the event. He backed up a little, half shrouding himself in the darkness of the basement. So tell me, Dave, that line up to your dream? I... well, not really. And you just had a dream. Nothing else. You're sure? I'm sure. You don't sound it. Look, you want to fight about that and give me something to work with? How about things I need to be doing now anyway? Such as? What's more important than helping me figure this out? Again, Joel Benson behaves himself. And what does that mean? Remember the favour I stalled with yesterday? Oh, right. Why did you ask her anyway? Thought you said we had some breathing room. If you let me go do what I need to do, then yeah, you will. It hinges on Benson not firing his gun. But who do you even shoot? You'll find out soon enough. Thanatos disappeared into darkness, for across the distance of the room to the door he was gone for good. I wandered back upstairs and looked round the foyer. No sign of Benson yet, but with Thanatos tracking him down I guess I didn't have to worry. I just left Oswin. We didn't see him at breakfast, so unless he was in his lab the places he could be were pretty limited. Maybe when the others had seen him. Thinking back to what Hoss said, I was due to float between the groups, and now seemed like a good a time as any to check in. As I entered the kitchen, the others were already thoroughly assessing what was available as far as food. But the attitude in the room seemed to show that things might not be so great with the food after all. We can make this work, but things go longer than a week. How many of us there are? Not that bad, huh? Oh, it's not looking good. At least as far as the refrigerator goes. Plenty of sundry still. Rice, flour, plenty of things we could stretch out potentially, but even that's finite. Pardon me, thankfully, we carved the pumpkin when we did. Still a lot of that in the freezer to work through. Which is... 
good, right? If it comes down to it, we can't afford to be picky. Depending on when the road issue gets addressed, even beyond working with wife and me coming to some of the woods, we might have last a couple of weeks yet. Which isn't good. Well, I said that, right? You did, yeah. Especially when... Uh, eyes went to Roswell and he just shrugged. If it happens, it happens. There's no point worrying about it and planning around one less person. Right, we have to assume we can feed everyone still here, right? Not exactly what I was getting at, but yes. Then what were you getting at? That there'd be less? What's a possibility? A growing one, but one might make the food stretch for longer. That's... well, uh... As long as we don't start deciding who to kill off, we're fine, right? We're all still friends. Of course we are, Dave. It's not as if... Well, um, I suppose the talk yesterday is kind of muddy that little, huh? You going to say the rat's worth of one of us is a traitor? I thought he said that no one was. Dean, for someone that's dating a Tanuki, you sure can't piece two and two together. Oh, I'm sorry. He means that Thanatos really meant that it was one of us. He's torn us on our shoulders and none of us were guilty. Which one is it, though? Well, if anyone would know, it'd be him. But something tells me he's going to be less generous in telling us who to point the finger at. What something is that, Roswell? The openly admitted to trying to kill one of us is a walking, talking rat. Robot. Like that makes any difference. It might make a little, like... I don't know, he's not telling us everything for sure, but he's also been... questionably fair... The moment the words left my mouth, I doubted them. A sentiment shared by everyone except Roswell. Well, in a sense, that's true. If he was truly malicious, then he wouldn't have allowed you to print passwords, right? But well, a trade-off is that Dave didn't step in, then... One more of us could be dead, and it'd be his fault. Well, take Tyson, for example. Who knows what would be different if you hadn't stepped in, Dave? I'd rather not think about it. Right, but the fact that he allowed you to intervene rather than carrying out the deed anyway. He shrugged, shaking his head. Whatever his motives are, they're beyond me. They sound complicated. Complicated is one way of putting it. it. Doesn't help us figure out if we can or can't trust him, does it? I wouldn't, but it's a choice between someone who's proven to help keep people alive even if it requires a special word. It's better than the alternative, for sure. Well, on things we can control, them. We might not need to worry about foraging, but if it comes to that, have it covered. What about how dangerous the woods are? Yeah, yeah I can handle myself in the woods. If it makes you feel any better, I won't go out there unless I've got the axe, or a gun if we can find one. Even then, only as a last resort, alright? I nodded slowly, not really liking the idea of my boyfriend heading out there by himself. But if anyone could do it, it'd be him. As far as it being an option, it's good to know we have one should the food run low. Absolutely. We're a long ways off that, but it's nice to go. It's there. So if food is handled, what now? Well, it's meal planning. While we have the food, it's probably a good idea to figure out how to use what we have efficiently, right? A probably a good idea. Seems that we have a fair bit, though it might turn out to be more than we realise once we've planned actual meals. There any way I can help with that at all? Well, if Orlando can plan the meals, we can act as runners around the kitchen to call out what we do and do not have. Which means I'm not needed? You're welcome to stay if you want. Between the three of us, we should have it. Alright, probably not a bad time to check on the others anyway. See how they're going with that sword or whatever, right? Oh, feel free to let know we have the food situation under control. It's one less thing to worry about, but they know sooner rather than later, right? With a nod, I left the three of them sort out the food properly and made my way upstairs to the museum. When I got to the museum, all three of them seemed to be standing in front of the suit of armour. No progress seemed to have been made. Uh, guys? Oh, hey, Dave. I'm guessing getting the sword out isn't going well. Oh, and splitting the groups up like this, I didn't think the actual need for a wrench was going to get in the way. I thought the fact that it was bolted down was pretty indicative that it wasn't meant to be moved. If it's only bolted down, not welded down, we can remove it, right? Not without a wrench. So what have you been doing this whole time then, rather than getting a tool from downstairs? Yeah, just talking. About? 
Oh, nothing important, really. Oss and I were talking about family, or trying to. But oh, Tyson kept chiming in about his brother. Was not. Oss, what was the last thing Tyson said about Dave? Oss. Tyson. Sal. Dave. Anyway. So, he said you're pretty dumb sometimes, but he loved you anyway, Dave. Dude! I guess I love you too, Ty. Thanks. You two are very strange. But I suppose that's just what brothers are like. Grimacing slightly, I looked at the sword we all standing around. I think it's about time we got back to getting this free. So if we don't have a tool to get this out, what should we do? Go and get one, maybe? Admittedly, I'm happy to just linger for the time being. Yeah, I agree. But weapons? Get this sword, I'll get us nowhere anyway. Well, Sal could use it, Dean maybe, but it's not even sharp. Plus, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. What is a sword if not just a bigger knife? So many guns? A lot of guns. We really don't. Besides, the bare minimum is going to do us fine. I don't think most of us have even fired a gun before. There's every chance we'd be doing more damage to ourselves than those we might protect ourselves against. But is it better to have one than not in this case? I'd say it's better to not be in a position where we need to weigh that up. Long past the chance for that. I'm afraid I agree, but uh, a knife isn't going to do much better, huh? How are you going to wait for them to come to us? It's not like any of us is planning on heading out to see them first, right? I'm not too sure about that, really. What makes you say that? Orlando's father, mostly. Meaning? I can foresee a problematic situation where Orlando may try and bargain for our lives and get himself in trouble. Plus, doing so before they make a deal would give him the largest buffer, lest someone gets in the way. Is there anything you do with that? Is he a bit of a wimp for that? Hey, everyone's scared sometimes, Tyson. Just depends on what and when. And Memphis is absolutely the kind of person that will latch onto whatever it is that gets you to cower. What does Memphis fear? That I do not know. Must be something pretty messed up. It could be anything. Maybe he's afraid of rats, for all we know. So we just stick Thanatos at him? Would we be so lucky it's something easy? I doubt it, though. Maybe it's like anime. Listen, he's evil already. Not like an anime is just a given. Where isn't his family from, you know? Japan? Isn't that racist? Uh, being rat Japanese isn't racist. Not like an anime is, uh... Please don't say racist. Probably likes anime. It's just a good bet that people do, right? Well, I think Hoss has tainted your mind on how many people like anime versus those that don't. Sal, even you like anime. Big strong guy like you that lifts weight and has a deep voice isn't what most people would imagine when liking anime. What do they imagine? Hoss. Mostly Hoss. Uh, pretty much. I believe Dave meant it another way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's cringe. Very cringe. Rude. He's right, though. Dude, you're almost as bad. I am not. Sal, how bad is he? I don't think I know for certain, but... I know it's a slippery slope from what I've heard from Orlando. Remind me to watch myself around Orlando more from now on. Either way, I don't think we can bank on Memphis feeding an anime enough to it's enough for a defence mechanism. Which means we need something a bit more reliable. Yeah, well, as you got an arse on somewhere you haven't told us about, we still have to find something. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Worst case scenario, we can just grab a tool to get this sword free and achieve the bare minimum we set out to do. Guessing you don't need me here for that? 
do you have somewhere you need to be? I already checked with the others, so I figured now is a good enough time as any to see if we can find Benson. Uh, speaking of, they have the food situation under control for what it's worth. He hasn't shown up yet? Oh, that's a surprise. I would have thought we'd have seen him by now, at least with how present he's been lately. Need me to relay a message, or...? We'll be fine, I think. Though, if we struggle, we'll call out. Benson? None of the others seem to have seen him so far. With him missing at breakfast, too, a strange hadn't made himself known. My mind immediately went to the worst, feeling they'd been an unsuspected victim while the rest of us had been distracted. The only thing stopped me from going into a full-blown panic was what Thanatos had said earlier. He'd know for certain if Benson had been done in, and I assumed he'd have said something. Taking the load off, I sit on the stairs and looked around the foyer, wondering where I should be looking. For a brief moment, I wondered if I should head back to one of the other groups and help them rather than sit and do nothing. That's when I heard it echoing through the foyer. The distinct sound of knocking coming from the front door. My fur stood on end, I wasn't sure how to think at first. Knocking could only mean one thing. Should I answer the door? The knocking happened again, and this time was more insistent. He you noticed know, so that I stood and took a couple of steps close to the door. Who was Benson? he just walked in. Same with Oswin or any of the others. Who was there? The moment I'd spoken, I drew back, feeling like I shouldn't have asked. Going up. Need to talk about something. Uh. Open it. I almost jumped as Thanatos seemed to come out of nowhere, standing next to me. And as usual, I scrambled up my leg and perched on my shoulder. Who is it? Oh, it's safe. Open it. Before I could question him about it, the knocking happened again. Although it was closer to slamming rather than anything polite. I hear the others starting to approach the foyer, but with Thanatos whipping the back of my head with his tail, I opened the door. I was greeted to a meaty hand poised in front of my face, though dropped limply after noticing the door had opened. Uh, hello? Yeah, not a Hammond. He looked down at me, the slight tilt in his head and narrowing of his eyes made me wonder what he was thinking, but I could even try to stop him and pushed his way inside. He looked around the place I looked at Thanatos. There was nothing in how he reacted that implied that something was wrong as much as the feeling in my gut told me I was in danger. You are after Hammond? Yeah, I need to talk about something. Uh, go get one, will you? Um, I believe I'll suffice for that. Benson, much like Thanatos, seemed to have popped out of nowhere and seemed stiff in how he stood in the doorway of one of the side rooms. He made his way over and once a large bear had turned his attention away from me, I took a few steps back. You're not hammered either, but I remember you. Yeah? May I ask what you're doing here? Game to talk. About? Wanted to kill a deal. The others all filed in at this point, three stopping midway down the stairs, the others in the doorway leading to the dining room. The bear looked at everyone in turn, seemingly lingering on Roswell for he noticed someone on the stairs. Ah, is that you? Dom? Well, ain't you a sight for sore eyes? How have you been? I've uh, been better. I seemed to know him, and more importantly, he was relaxed around him. Why? As he stepped forward, I noticed the gun tucked in the back of his pants, and then I looked once more to Thanatos, who just shook his head. Benson seemed to notice too, but only tensed further. No shit. Before we get too distracted, uh, Dominic, was it? I uh, just arm is fine. The fire is hardly come to a place to be having a lengthy discussion. Uh, shall we move to the dining room? Sure, that's fine. Oh, wait. All eyes were on me and I slowly raised a hand to point out the gun Dom had tucked away. Gun. You know, what about it? May I ask why you came armed? Don't think the big deal is giving you got a piece on you right now. Uh, surely there's good reason, too, given we have a sudden unexpected visitor while the road off the mountain is currently missing. Got me there, all right. Well. Well, what? You're not taking my gun. Why'd you have one, though? Well, in case things got ugly. Like if you, I'm just here to talk. This time. Dom led the way to the dining room with Dean, Roswell and Orlando backing off to let him pass. 
He pulled out a chair and dropped into it, stretching and leaning back while the rest of us tried to figure out what to do. You are after Hammond, yes? If you wait here, I shall go fetch the master of the house. Suits me fine. Benson shot Roswell a look, then the same to Hoss for making to leave. I shall not be long. Get up tired, isn't he? Well, hasn't changed much, has he, Hoss? Yeah, well, uh, things have been rough lately. Guess I know why. What would your guess be? I figure that's because of Jack. The name made me shudder briefly and shake my head. Thanatos took this chance to drop down onto the table and cocked his head towards the chair that I should fall into. Yes, that's uh, one thing. Although, why do you know that? Oh, Jack and I. He trailed off and the room was quiet. I looked around wondering if something was happening or someone was going to get interrupt, but it never happened. Uh, you and Jack? Where work buddies? Work buddies, right. What do you want me to say? Oh, you said plenty. What I want to know is why my dad sent you to come talk. Yeah, that's between me and the Hammond. Uh, speaking of, here I am. Good to see you. Oswin grunted, not bothering to sit down and just looked Dom over, raising his eyebrows. Oh, what do you want? Kind of cut a deal. About? Ross wants what you have, and it's the first of you to come in and take it. I told him he can't have it. I'm telling you, he's going to come take it anyway. Your call. This is sounding less like a deal and more like a threat. It may as well be. He came armed and everything. Now, if you want to stick around, then great. None of us mind getting our hands dirty. Yeah, if we don't have to, we'd rather have the easy job. So the deal offer is to stand back and keep our lives while he comes charging to take whatever he wants. Uh, pretty much. Hold on, how do you even convince him to come and talk without him just charging in? Oh, easy enough. You're clear now we don't have to make the bodies appear. Easier job. You can't be serious. You tell me, he's your dad. Orlando went to reply but cut himself off. I still wide and seemingly unable to refute anything just said. That's all we need to do? Just stay out of the way? Tell Memphis we decline the deal. What? No deal. We just granted it out. We can all survive. We just stay out of the way. Do you believe Memphis is one to give his word? So I just kind of piss him off instead. I'd rather die standing and have him chase us down anyway once he's realised what he's after is something that doesn't exist. But you're doing all of us by making that decision. Let me see if I understand the situation completely. Perhaps I've made a mistake somewhere in my assumption. It's not a hat. You have a machine or something in the basement. The boss wants it. Has he told you exactly what it is? Time machine. And if I told you it wasn't? You think that's going to matter to the boss? He's already decided that's what it is. So you understand that whatever I give him isn't going to be what he's after, and he's going to go on it a raid regardless. So, we're stuck. No matter what we do, he's going to come looking for something that doesn't exist, and then have to stand to make us give him it or kill us when he do it, we don't. My question was answered with resigned silence. My friends are at a loss for words. Oswin staring at Dom, trying to figure something out, and Dom just sitting there as if he just asked us what the weather was like. How long do we have? Until. He comes knocking, presumably. Well, basically, yes. Hours? Days? You said I'm paying a visit tomorrow if I came back with bad news. Could maybe get you a day or two. But why? We're well, not hurting for food or shelter. Take an easier another day or two. Suits me fine for me. It's an easier job. Well, it's going to end up in murder anyway, then. What's the point? We're going to have to call a favourite of buddy of ours to skew a trial, but it's all the better. Maybe bank off the boss before, but that's nothing to keep him out of jail. And with that much capital to waste, I doubt he even noticed the cost. Yeah, too. Do you know why he wants a time machine? You ain't tell me it really is a time machine now. It is not a time machine. Oswin shot me a sour look for turning back to Dom. 
I, however, also curious as what specifically he wants with what's downstairs. While not a time machine, I'm curious to know what he wants it for. And said much. Just he has some correcting to do. Correcting. Getting rid of the old man properly for Starless. Well, can't he just, you know? Roswell made a pistol gesture with his hand, pretending to shoot Orlando. Yeah, I guess not. I'm not lost to what that small minded dragon is thinking then, but I have no part in it. What about the deal, though? Dave, there's been no deal struck that isn't just a ploy to delay the inevitable. Good, Sweden, if you like. And what do you have in mind? I can tell you how we've gone to the mountain if you want. Give yeah, you a head start while the boss makes a go at the thing downstairs. We can go home. Don't get away, go. All I'm saying is I'll tell you how we got here. Not exactly a good deal if you don't say the main role. Gives it like you also blew it up. Jack did the explosion, but we came up another way. And this other way is still usable. Yeah, if you can get there, sure. I swapped looks with Oswin. Silently I pleaded with him, but I couldn't tell where his mind was at. What I did catch was him look quickly to Roswell, then back to me before turning back to Dom. Counteroffer. Oh, yeah? Memphis can't get the machine working without me, whether it being a time machine or not. So, in exchange is what I'll offer at the very least in good faith. What are you thinking? You versus someone else? How oh, is this even a good idea? You're going to go and we're going to end up with one of them here? I know, me plus one other shall go. Why are you playing that? I shall go as collateral. In addition, one of the others will come along so they can be shown what this other method of the mountain is. Then I'll be free to come back and relay that information, obviously. Benson made a retort and also put up a hand quickly, indicating they should hold off. Those are my terms. I don't think the boss is going to like that. Wait, who's going to go? Assuming Memphis is fine with this arrangement, it shall be you and me. The reason why it should be more than obvious. I looked at him worried. I knew what he was talking about, and I didn't think that the promise I made only a day ago would be cashed in already. Alright, I told you the boss is going to like that. Then it is off. Either we play by my terms or not at all. I know what that means for us once you finish telling Memphis that. I was floored. Everyone in the room seemed to be, with the exception of Benson, who was fuming, Dominic, who seemed to be thinking it over, and Roswell, who just seemed worried. Oh, best I can do is see if he'll play nice with that arrangement. Should he be agreeable to those terms, by all means, can pay us another visit. He shook his head, gesturing to Benson as he made to leave. If you're afraid to stay as long as you like, if you were here to kill us, you'd have done so already. He made another gesture to Thanatos, but gave up when it seemed the rat was going to stay right where he was. I watched as Roswell took his leave as well, heading into the kitchen deep in thought. The rest were swapped looks, not knowing what to do next. What? Well, it's not as if we really know what to be thinking, right? How did this even happen? Were you always part of the mob? Is this a new thing? I'm afraid new. It's actually that gig we had which started this up. What? Hold on, what gig? The show that was filmed or whatever that one, whatever it was? Yeah, thanks for paying attention at the start of my acting career, buddy. What do you mean by started up? Was it like a recruitment? Oh, I think it started that way. The boss knows why he likes the man. Be careful how you phrase that. If you're a bit bigger built off, chances are you'd have been recruited too. Yeah, I'll pass, thanks. Was that for me from legitimate or just for Dad to scoop out new members of the family? Yeah, I can't tell you. I can't or I won't? Can't, I don't know. I took a shiny to my buddy Jack, though, and brought him along. How did I miss this happening? How did I not know that Dad has brought you and Jack on on things? I did, maybe I could have just... maybe... But they think you're a piece of shit, really. Dude, not cool. He asked. But still, Orlando's his son, right? Outside of money and violence, I don't think I've seen the boss crack a smile over anything else. Gets real mad when you bring up his son, though. Because... Because he's the heir. All Tennessee's still kicking, isn't doing any favours either. By context, that'd be. her grandpa. Boss can't do much about who's next in line with the old man still about. 
that once he's gone, well... He wouldn't kill Grandpa, would he? I caught sight of Roswell entering the room again, looking dejected, even with the snacks under his arm. I tuned out what the others were talking about to watch Roswell wander up to where you're all stationed and throw a bag of marshmallows on the table. Oh hey, thanks little man. Roswell gave him a brief scowl before sitting down in the chair himself, burying his face in his hands without touching the snacks he strewn about his part of the table. I found myself sitting down nearby, wondering why I felt so off. It was likely everything Dom had told us, the sense of entrapment that was lingering in the air. The worst here was Dom seemed completely fine with how rattled everyone still standing was. Hey, Horst, do you remember how the food was on set? He said nothing and just watched as Dom reached out for the bag of marshmallows, turning it open and shoveling a few in his mouth. So you really work for Dad? Sure do. But why? Why not? Pays all right, easy jobs now and again. But it's against the law. And? What do you mean, and? That's like it. You're part of this family too, even though the boss doesn't like it. You're willing to admit that exists, at least. But you're working for Memphis, just... Where do we go from here? What do you mean? If this deal doesn't go down well, that can only mean one thing. You mean... You mean returning my buddy Jack and shooting up the place? I would to myself a little as Orlando and Hoss looked at one another mortified. No one said anything and the silence went on long enough that Dom assumed he was correct. It comes to that, no problems putting a bullet to that pretty face of yours, Hoss. That's just what's in the job description. He shrugged lazily, standing up. If I only do it now, I could. I just don't want to. So what happens now? Can't let him leave out of there, can we? No one will just be back to dry shooting us. You think you can stop me leaving? We we'll outnumber you. Yeah, what's going to happen when I don't touch base with the boss? Dom turned to me, his toothy smile not fading a bit. Yeah, I reckon a certain friend of mine might come in looking for his friend. I could feel my skin crawl into my fur, barely watching as Dom made his way from where he was sitting to stand behind me. His heavy hands dropped on my shoulders and he leaned in, speaking quietly. Jack's been wanting to see you again too. Almost probably my long, but that'd be better hold off so we didn't have any accidents. I was quaking, looking at Thanos for any indications of what we should be doing. Instead, he seemed intent on just lounging back on the oversized marshmallows if it were a beanbag. So I was going to let him walk? We don't have a choice, do we? Why so angry? I went on my way to offer you guys an alternative. Yeah, some alternative. Something felt very wrong about what was happening. Lantos' smile seemed to hint at it too. But did that mean I had to step in, or just let things play out? Anyway, no point in sticking around here. Probably about time I headed back. He didn't bother waiting for us to say anything to him, said just turning to leave. Is this really okay? Do we have no other option? We're out to run, don't we? Make our escape somehow. How do you imagine we do that, genius? Tyson was right. Even if we attempted to climb our way off the mountain with what remained of the road, none of us could make that. It wasn't an option if we all wanted to escape. I noticed Thanos was making a go for my arm and stood as he climbed up my sleeve. He gestured with his head to the foyer and I went to go have a look. I could see Dom still standing outside, seemingly taking the time to stretch just beyond the threshold of the back door. Oh, wait. He turned to look at me and I looked at Thanatos for guidance. Not that he seemed to be paying any mind, instead looking right at the bear opposite us. You leaving already? No point in sticking around here, is there? Just, you dropped a lot on us suddenly. Why are you offering us a deal, really? Why do any of this? I thought I was pretty clear with that. I just want an easier job. And going with the effort of making a deal with us rather than just showing up with guns is easier? Expecting me to come out and say I don't want to kill anyone? I'm in some unfortunate position. I'm taking pity on you lot for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He cocked a smile and I took a step back. I like my job. It gets messy sometimes. I, if I don't have to get messy, but still get paid all the better. Not that I mind messy, mind you. You must be crazy. I don't understand. 
Trust me, I know crazy and Jack has me beat. It's true, Jack's a lot more predictable than you are. The rat talks. He's special. You're gonna go back to Memphis now, right? The rat is actually talking. How is the rat talking? He's special? Uh, I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know what you plan on telling him about your visit. And tell him exactly what happened. I offered a deal, you need to think about it. Not good enough. Why is that not good enough? Memphis isn't going to take that. He'll get bored and shop tomorrow anyway. Probably. Which is why we're not thinking about it. Benson? We're going to take your deal, but we need some days to be ready for what will happen. How many? Two. Stay out of this. Why two days? Trust me, we need two. So in two days I'll be coming to grab the two pigs? It would appear so, though I have no idea why the rat presumes he can speak for us. You need to make one thing clear to your boss. The extra time given to us isn't going to change anything. Make us sound pathetic. Dom didn't trust him based on how his eyes narrowed. That's all. Strange rat. Yeah. I could see Benson wondering if he should speak up. Him meeting my eye briefly but missing his opportunity. Alright, two days. Then he just left, turning around and wandering away into the trees and out of sight. For a few minutes I just stood there, staring at the spot he disappeared before finding myself light-headed and I fell to my knees. Aye, watch it! Did that really just happen? We have two days. Only two. All things considered, that could have gone worse. How much worse? A few casualties. I wasn't kidding when I said he was variable. I had the exact conversation a few times and sometimes he skilled a couple of you to make a point. What happens now? You have two days to figure that out. I could hear the sigh Benson made and knew exactly who he's directing it to. Do you know what we should do, Thanatos? No, legitimately things are still up in the air. I'll need to consider my next move carefully, otherwise this go-around is a waste. Two days. Indeed. Also want to know that we've been afforded some extra time. Yeah. I have a question for you, Benson. What? Did you know I have your key? Benson's eyes went wide briefly and a hand went to his pocket. But his eyes narrowed once more, relaxing. You lied. You caught me. Oh well, but good to know you have it on you. Benson took a step back, eyeing Thanatos and then me carefully. I don't want it. I'd ask if I wanted it. It's not you I'm worried about. Oh, I don't need it now anyway. If I really want it, I'll just come grab it later. Benson took his leave, presumably to go report to Oswin and leave me alone with the rat. Well, now I'm sure you have questions. Not really. Not even a little. Okay, so I do have a couple. Fire away. Why'd you lie to Benson? About the key, so I could find out where it was. You didn't already know? I had a hunch. Again, it comes down to random variants. He asked him to achieve something else. And that something else is? He knows what I'm capable of. Now he'll be on guard for the rest of this cycle. Which is good? Bad, actually. Look, again, it was a mixture of confusion and disgust. We just laughed it off. It's me to work with. Don't worry. I'm going to worry more if you tell me not to. Get more important things to concern yourself over. Right, two days until Oswin and Roswell get taken by Dom to who knows where. Are you going to let that happen? Should I? That I shall leave up to you. You have two days to prepare for the worst. But for now it's best you go check in with the others. What did you do? Nothing. Silent Hoss are just looking for you. Oh, there you are. The moment the back door opened, Thanatos made a break for it and scurried inside. Uh, were we meant to stop him? No, it's... it's fine, I guess. And what happened? Dom just left. We have our deal set now. 
we do. But that will mean Roswell and Oswin. We're not going to just let them walk out of here, are we? I stood up and dusted myself off. Where are the others? Still reeling, but inside. It's probably best if we touch base as a group and, well, see how everyone is. We filed into the foyer where everyone was lingering around. Everyone was still dazed, it seemed like. Not that I could blame them. I'm so sorry, everyone. I didn't want... I never thought that... You didn't send them, did you? Of course not. Then stop. This isn't your fault. Guys, Dom just left. Kind of. Yeah, we watched him leave. That's not all. Thanatos gave us a couple more days before he'll be back. Until Dad arrives. No, Dom will be back. After that, I don't know. So when you say a couple of days, do we really have to? Yeah, two days until whatever happens next. Where's Benson now? Gone to talk to Oz in about it the next couple of days are going to go. No, the deal has been made. We have a couple of days before he and Roswell leave. Until the whole mob crew shows up. Please tell me we have some good news about the weapon situation. It's all we can get free without a wrench or something. That's all I made that clear. We still have the option for guns. Not great for us. All we need is Benz and Tess where they're kept and we're good. Have you ever even fired a gun before? Have you? Weapons are only one problem. Food is the other. How bad is the food situation anyway? After the short term, we have enough. Not enough for three square meals given the amount of people we have. But we've hardly been doing that anyway. I notice you said short term. Well, sadly, yes. After we run the numbers, we can safely have food at our normal rate of consumption another week or so. Longer if we start rationing immediately. And after that? We well, have yeah, forage is an option, assuming we're able. I don't think it'll come to that. Probably anyway. After all, two days until we might be escaping anyway. That's assuming everything goes well. And I assume we don't get duped. Dom isn't so bad, or wasn't all that bad, or... Well, it's hard to say exactly how good he is, but compared to Jack, he's a saint. And then there's Memphis. Without having met Jack, it's hard to know how he compares to Dad, but Dad's horrible. That I can agree with. How bad are we talking? Well, considering Jack takes you through the forest and waits until you're almost back for making his move, we have a potential baseline. And here's the thing that he's originally going to be arriving tomorrow. Speaking of, what's the plan? Are we staying or leaving? What do you mean? Well, they're the mob, right? They show up tomorrow with guns. What are we doing? We're assuming they won't keep their word. Or Thanatos is lying. You'd rather take that chance? I sure as hell don't want to risk it. Roswell? I feel like I know what you're going to ask. In two days, you and Oswin, uh, I mean... It's this reason I made you all promise. I made you promise knowing the worst could happen, and now it has. It's better that I be put in danger as the rest of you have a better chance of living. It's hardly the ideal situation, is it? Better question, if you're going to be able to go then back to us know what the escape route is. I'm assuming there is one. There was something unsettling about how he smiled when he said that. I shook my head. It has to be. They got into the mountain somehow, and it has to be a way for them to leave without the road getting fixed, right? Otherwise... Well, shit. Well, it's not vacation, huh? Roswell's comment hung heavy in the air. Even just scanning around the room, I could tell we were at a loss of what to do. With so much of the day left, how best could we use the time? I, I should go talk to Oswin about this, right? Silence. I started to wonder if I'd even been heard. Probably a good idea. If nothing else, it is worth seeing what he thinks of this. I turned and headed the basement, figuring the best place to look would be in Oswin's lab. After all, that's where he was most of the time I wanted to see him. 
sliding the door open as greeted the familiar green glow of his lab. There he was, sitting at his desk. Oswin. He didn't look up, continued to type away his computer, all the way up until I closed the door behind me. I was wondering when you come by, Dave. Oswin, what what happened today? Did you know that was going to happen? Why'd you volunteer yourself? Why'd you volunteer Roswell so readily? I stepped forward up to the desk and he just swiveled around to look at me. Oh, which question do you want me to answer, answer first? Any, I just... Not every day you get to talk to someone like that. Not every day you find out to make what sounds like hostage exchange either. He grunted, looking me over. You feel I handled that poorly? I don't know, I've never had to negotiate like that before. I had a feeling this might happen, I took the path that seemed to benefit us best. By sacrificing yourself? And make no mistake, I've been alone in the room with Memphis before. Chances are of everyone present, I'm the most likely to survive a close encounter with him. Plus the vault offers me some level of protection from the other two at least. And Roswell's just because of how long he's got left. In part, Roswell is deceptively slippery, so should the need arise, he may have the best chance of slipping away. Granted, slipping away in the mortal sense is also on the cards, and he offers the least to lose should that happen. And you're fine with that? Does it matter? We hardly have any other options. He stood slowly, worrying over to a shelf and starting to look over it as if searching for something. As to your other questions, you're only what you knew. That we were going to have a visitor. Sanat also was fairly quiet about the specifics. And he stopped Benson from firing his gun. Yes, yeah, a relatively easy thing to accomplish, all things considered. I ask, he obeys. Because he's loyal to you. You could also call it love. But what if it was Jack or Memphis? It was a gamble I was willing to take. I had a say in the matter anyway. Dominic would have shown up regardless, and in hindsight, listening to the rat paid off. Well, there's no sense in worrying about the alternative. And in two days, you're just going to go? In two days, I'll take Roswell with me and should go meet with Memphis. Ideally, Roswell will come back to deliver the news as to what the escape route is, and I shall remain there to ensure Memphis doesn't hunt you all down. Is there... Now, what I mean is, would Memphis... Uh, kill me? Yeah, it's possible. And you're just okay with that? Uh, more than okay. He retrieved something from between two books and looked at it, the briefest smile crossing his face. What is that? Uh, just a photo. He placed it in an envelope and sealed it, placing it into his pocket. A photo of who? For who, even, given you just sealed it up? It's another gamble. I feel like I'm on a winning streak at the moment. Sounds like you've been hanging around with Roswell too much. Maybe I have. That boy sure does like his risky gambits, I would admit. So what's your plan for the next couple of days? If you're just going to go willingly, then I don't know. Now, that's a question. I have no clue. None at all. Getting off the mountains is my primary concern. Choosing to arm myself in a light doesn't get me more insurance than you'll make it out alive. I'm worried I'm being too hopeful, underneath all the nerves and worries that this is all just a big trap. What do you expect it? Do you have any more questions? Not really, but... I don't know, have you heard anything about, like, seeing things without the vault? You know, as if he didn't need to use a password, or having Thanatos do his thing to knock you out? I only asked half-heartedly, but I could see how he immediately tensed up. What? Or has this been happening to you? I'm not sure. He moved quickly, ushering into a chair and ducking into the side room. He's only gone a few seconds where he dropped down in the other chair and started examining my eyes. Am I sick? I don't know yet. I'd rather not take the chance. It seems a little overboard, don't you think? I've been able to use the vault actually using the vault is something that Florencia and I theorised could happen. What does it mean? It means either the experiment is going very well or horribly wrong and there's no way to tell. Meaning? I'm not going to die, am I? Uh, no, Dave, you're not going to die. He sat back, setting aside the few things he used to examine me with and breathe through his nose. A morphic resonance, in theory anyway, is just recording a survival instinct, remember? Right, from a past life with the vault or whatever, right? Very good. Now, let's say that you were able to do this at will rather than when you're in danger or the receptors in your brain that fire off stress went off. 
It sounds like a thing that if I said what that thing was, you'd get annoyed at me. You're right, it does sound like that, and I assure you they can't happen. It's not how it happens, it's not meant to be how it happens. But are you positive what you experienced were visions and memories and not just hallucinations? I don't know yet. Vanitor seemed to think that what I experienced wasn't nearly traumatic enough, so it doesn't line up. In a way, I'm relieved, if curious. About? All I can say is the strangest dream I've had in a while. A strange in what way? Strange in the way I felt like I wasn't controlling my own body, but I was there looking out at the same set of eyes. I understand there isn't any readily available resources we can pull from to figure this out. The idea that your survival instinct transcends time and space is already considered pseudoscience. Seems like science enough to me, given it's worked so far. Indeed. We sat like that for a little bit before Oswin started the fidget. What is it? A nose, mostly. Don't worry about it. That's literally the line people say that causes more worry to happen. I've resolved that my life has been in constant flux between if I'm actually alive or dead for a while. Or at least ever since things fell apart. You seem pretty alive to me. A living and being alive aren't the same. A big part of me gave up the day Reginald died. I thought it had been the day the medical trial went wrong. It was the same day. A coup de grace after watching so many die by my hand. Failing to find an answer to Reginald's condition in time was fitting punishment enough, I feel. It really wasn't a great day for you, was it? So many things went wrong that day. My masterpiece of a vaccine failed. Reginald died. Florencia. Florencia? Oswin's face scrunched up briefly. It was hard to tell if he was upset or tired, but his tone shifted to be softer in a sense. It was an eventful day for my family. What happened to Florencia? Outside losing her brother along with seeing me crumple, she came out of it relatively unscathed. Though... Come on, you can't keep trading off like that. Let me gather my thoughts, boy. I do wonder how she's faring now. She knows about what's going on here or not. I'd say you could call and check, but... Well, we're still under the jammer, right? Uh, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago she was here, and as luck would have it, you just missed her when you lot arrived on the bus. And she just left? Presumably I don't think he'd be around after Thanatos seemed to apply as much. Why is that every time his name comes up, I'm wondering whether or not we can't trust him? I trust that you can't trust him. At least that will work out safer than believing everything he says. You don't think completely trusting him is a good idea? Of course not. He knows things that no person should have a right to know. To that end, it's hard to really know how far to trust him. we are just play things, after all. I don't like the sound of being just a plaything. I like if you seem to have taken a liking to you. Or perhaps you're also just his current favourite toy. Sometimes I wish he'd leave me alone. Other times I'm thankful he's at least given me something to keep my friends alive. I can always stop if you want. I don't know how long he'd been there, but he stepped out from the shadows on top of the desk. What are you two been talking about? Nothing, well, nothing important anyway. What do you want, Thanatos? I'm bored. Did you want to play a game? I'm going to entertain him, will you, Dave? I should focus on getting this done. What is whatever that is, anyway? I don't bother brushing him off. I'll just tell him if you don't. Fine, it's my will. I'm making a few adjustments, is all. As in, when you die, that sort. Oh, that sort, yes. If you don't mind me asking... If you do die, what should we do? I survive. Everything I own, everything that I was, I'm leaving to one person anyway. There's no need to concern yourself about anything else. If I have my way, it'll be a clean transfer. Is it me? It's not you. You need not worry yourself over it. Benson should be the one to ensure that everything that needs to happen does. And if Benson dies too? Florentia will, no? That's uh, correct. Come on, Junior, he's not going to be any more use to you. Besides, like I said, I'm bored. All right, fine. We left Oz into his work and Thanatos guided me through the passage until we came out the other side. I didn't know what sort of game Thanatos perhaps wanted to play, but something told me I wasn't going to like it. The basement was cold and we stopped in the middle of the room with the lights off. 
So, I've been thinking a bit about something you said this morning, about the thing you remembered. I thought you said it was a dream. That's the thing, isn't it? It has to be. So, let me ask you a question. Are you feeling all right after I put you into last time? Last time? Uh, like what you did yesterday in the lab. Right. I guess so. No head hurting or seeing things? No, should I be? You tell me. Thanatos climbed down from my shoulder and I wandered over to his room and I followed behind. Why are we in here? I want to check something. I watched as he wandered over the input panel, looking up to it. His attention went to the door next. The whole time he stayed quiet. What are you checking? I left wondering how different dreams and memories are from one another once again. Once again? We had this conversation before, but let me catch you back up. When I look through my memories, it's like seeing everything on a single line. Lots of big gaps when I'm offline. Okay. Are the gaps always the same, or...? No, always start the same, but things have been wildly different after I made it known I remember. I remember my master. I remember watching him die. I remember what he asked of me, and when he gave me my name. I remember I was back then compared to how I am now. He turned to face me, shaking his head. There are gaps. Notes about gaps where they shouldn't be. But there are other times where the pattern breaks and I awaken somewhere else long after the vacation has ended. I don't think I get it. When the pattern breaks, how do I know I'm not looking at a memory, but instead a dream? Do you sleep? You're a robot, so I'd assume you need to recharge at some point. It's not the same as sleeping, but it may as well be. And so I'm forced to once again consider what these things are. Are they dreams or memories? If the memories, they'd be traumatic, right? That's what you said this morning. Oi, I'm serious. So am I. The same rules apply to you or not? Of course they don't. And the vault itself, not someone coded into it. I gestured at him, confused. So how do you not know if something's a dream? You seem to just know everything, so why is this tripping you up? Besides, we already had this conversation before. Why are you wasting my time with it now? It's not a waste. I'm legitimately confused. You're a robot. Whose memories seem to show signs of tampering. Not this time, but in previous loops. Well, don't look at me. I don't know how that could happen. There's one thing it could be. But the only one that would know is my master. And that is? If he asked me to delete parts of my memory for him. And you just do that? Of course. The looks of things, he only wanted small sections removed, but I don't know. Then ask him. It's not that easy. Talking with him lately has been difficult. But with you lot all around, finding the time to slip away and have a bit of a chat is hard. I'm guessing you don't want his following? Pretty much. I sighed. My head was hurting, but not anything he'd done to me. I was just stressed from things easy earlier, confused about what he's getting at. That's what I told myself anyway. Which leads us back to this check I want to do. Which is? Get comfortable. I don't... I couldn't get the words out of my mouth before a sound assaulted my ears. A high enough pitch that I felt myself black out. I felt myself lose consciousness long before I hit the floor. Internally I wondered how hard I'd land on the floor. It was strange being conscious while being unconscious. Or being able to actively think things while surrounded by an endless void. When I came to I was in the woods. Everything was hurting, but I picked myself up and started walking. No one was around, just me and my heavy breathing. It was dark, cold, and I had the feeling it was very wrong. It took me longer than it should have to realise I was bleeding. Blood was seeping from a wound on my body. A blood-covered hand came out to sit in front of my face, a grim smile forming soon after. Something told me I knew everything about what had just happened, why I was injured, but I couldn't open my mouth to ask. Stumbling into the makeshift campsite, I collapsed again, listening out into the dark. My blood ran cold when I heard the sing-song voice of someone I hoped I didn't have to face. Dave, where did you go? Soon afterwards, his manic cackling and echoing through the trees. I know you're out there. As much as my injuries would allow, I scrambled forward to move on from the river. Something was pushing me toward the house. 
Orlando. I coughed, blood splattering against the tree I was leaning against when I turned my head. Far from the distance I could make out lights. It had to be the mansion. Further off in the distance I could hear Jack laughing. He seemed to be moving away from me rather than pursuing me and I sighed. Though doing so sent a jolt of pain up through my chest, I continued. My pace slowed, my vision blurred. I could see someone approach me in the dark, but it's hard to make out who exactly it was. Maybe I'd given up, or maybe I'd known already with how deep the smell of blood was in my nose, I couldn't tell. There you are. My eyes dipped down to the gun in his hand. Dean? I coughed again. He stepped closer. And everything went black again. When I next opened my eyes, I was laying on my bed. My face hurt. I could smell blood on my face, but I seemed to have control of my body this time. As I stretched, I realised I was leaning against something warm and pillowy. When I groaned, a familiar voice gasped in surprise. Are you awake? Dean? Where... where am I? He looked me over, seemingly ignoring my question. He checked my eyes, a frown forming on his face that seemed to touch everywhere except my nose. Dean? You're in my room. Uh, our room. Uh, I brought you up here after Thanatos told me where you were. Oh, yeah, okay. I groaned as I sat up and Dean held his hand on the middle of my back for support. How do I look, by the way? The only amount of blood on your face, like one handsome hyena, if my opinion is worth anything. He continued to rub my back, nodding slowly. But you'll feel better after a shower and something to eat. What time is it? Not as late as you think it is, but you did miss dinner. Oh, so I must have been downstairs for a fair bit, huh? You've been upstairs for a while, too. Lanantos said you'd be fine, though I didn't trust him watching over you while you collapsed on the cold floor. He leaned over and kissed me on the cheek, rolling off the bed to wander around the other side and help me up, too. You kiss me, even covered in blood? Well, it's only your own blood, and there's not that much, really. But it's enough you should get a shower, so you can at least, you know. As he turned away, I grabbed him quickly by the arm, frowning. When I was unconscious, I had a, a thing, a vault thing. Someone's going to die again. No, not that. Just, I saw you and you were there and you had a gun and, um... Hey now, slow down. What happened? I was injured. Stabbed, maybe? Bleeding pretty bad, but... I was running away from Jack, I think. The last thing I remember was you being there, and you had a gun, but kind of passed out after that. Oh, it was sounding very involved. His arm slipped from my grasp and felt confused. Not worried or threatened, just confused. Dean placed his hands on my shoulders and looked me over again, and sure. Did you want me to stay? I was going to get you a sandwich, but I can stay if that's more important. No, it's okay. I'll have a shower. Plus a sandwich will probably do me some good. Dean didn't budge, instead just sitting there watching me carefully. What? Nothing else on your mind? There's one other thing. Just what's going to happen in a couple of days. It doesn't sit right with me, but all we can do is wait. What did you want to do? Escape would be nice, but... Well, we can't. We don't know the way out, or at least one that's an alternative to the main road. Right. I'll get clean. I'll get you something to eat and we can talk it out in the morning with the others, after you've gotten some rest. I chuckled, sheepishly hanging my head. I've just been asleep for hours. I know what my hyena looks like when he's exhausted. Don't worry about it. Just recover first and we'll go from there. Dean was back before I got in the shower and I greedily swallowed down the peanut butter sandwich he came back with. All he did was laugh and I should have been to the bathroom the moment I'd finished swallowing, waiting for me by the door until I was done. I was clean and could breathe through my nose normally. With something in my stomach and the heat from the water taking the aches away, I found myself collapsing into a mass of bed the moment I stepped out. In a daze, I was carried and put in bed. Then Dean came to lay down next to me as I started the drift off. The last thing I could feel before I drifted off was Dean cuddling me into his side and a gentle kiss placed atop my head. That is the end of Dean's Day 21. So, as I said, we'll be uh, catching up with Ty's stuff before long, certainly before 
the uh, next password video comes out so we'll be up to date and we'll see how that one pans out whether we'll be doing two or one for that day we'll find out in a bit but I hope you enjoyed this one it's nice to get back to the manor again it's been a small break from it and before I go as always I want to uh, thank all my donors on Patreon and Ko-fi for the money it all helps especially how things are going for pretty much everyone at this time and also bananas are quite welcome if you saw Norway's Eurovision entry last night you'll understand what I'm on about if not don't worry about it but I'm also happy with who won the contest I, I really like that song they deserved it <laughs> but before I ramble on too much Let's mention Monolay, Evan King, Marcus, Burnt Toast, Kartek, Copus Visser, Besuksu, Lark Huskerton, Bastian, Brian Hall, Gunnar Muller, Tiger Cub, Ida Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Brandon Bradford, Dissonance, Spiderling, Kopi, and Sintry Dragowolf, who are my top patrons, and Grizz, who is also one of my top patrons, but is responsible for this whole video by coming up with password. Also, I should give a mention that if you like the music in Password, a lot of it's actually by Sivalian, who, of course, is the person who wrote the opening music for the channel. And I do have more work for her at some point, but I need to do other stuff first. But that is it for Password. We will be definitely going far beyond the world next weekend. And I'm going to see how things go with and then I can work on some schedules I'm not going to commit myself to anything uh, far beyond the world next weekend but there will be something later in May as well don't worry about that it's just been one of those months and one of those pandemics really but thanks for watching until next time when we find out what's going on with Rana and Sam bye for now <laughs>